So here we are, HACCP Intermediate Course, Module 7, Hazard Analysis. The aim of this part of the course is to show delegates, I will show how you, how to conduct a hazard analysis. Learning outcomes by the end of this unit, you will be able to define risk and risk assessment, describe how to conduct a hazard analysis, assess the risk that hazard may occur, assess the severity of a hazard. So hazard analysis, the definition is evaluating information on hazards and conditions leading to their presence to decide those which are significant to food safety. And the different hazards we get there in the graphic, we've got microbiological, physical and chemical hazards. You need to consider contamination, multiplication and survival of toxins and spores at each step. You need to consider raw ingredients, their characteristics, composition, processing, preparation, microbiology, premises and equipment design, packaging, distribution, intended use and who the consumer is likely to uh, use the product. So deciding which hazards are significant. Let's have a look at some more definitions. Risk is the likelihood that a hazard will occur. Risk assessment is the process of identifying hazards, assessing the likelihood of occurrence and severity, and evaluating their significance. And you need to be looking at the complaint history and personal experience or experience of others within the building, within the business. Epidemiological information and the severity, you need to look at the magnitude of the hazard or the seriousness of the possible consequences. The serious of symptoms, whether they're acute or chronic, i.e. either short term or long term. The mortality and morbidity rate and the vulnerable groups that might be affected. The scientific information required. What are the potential hazards and risks? You need to look at the processing, cooking temperatures, times to destroy any microbiological hazards. You need to look at cooling times, preservative concentrations, pH and AW, the acidity, alkalinity and the water concentration. Post-process contamination, multiplication risk, risk from packaging, risk during distribution, the shelf life of the product. A risk assessment matrix is used to assess significant hazards or to ensure critical control points are critical. And it's really, you're looking at risk versus severity. Say, for example, we could use uh, a matrix where we are looking at cardboard in cooked chicken meal. Now, we, we would give it a score of 10 because it's a low risk. Uh, the risk of cardboard in cooked chicken is not likely. Severity, if something happens, is not likely to cause much harm. And we multiply the risk by the severity to give us a score, a total score of 100. Now, if we look at other ones, for example, uh, medium risk, we've got three there. We've got a stone in jam, a mouse in product, and a pin in cooked chicken. So, for example, the stone in jam is a medium risk because it's likely the stones will get in with the fruit into the, uh, into the area, into the food preparation area. But the severity is not going to cause big problems should the stone um, go into a consumer's mouth, for example. Um, you probably feel it or taste it before it does any damage. So it's a low severity and a medium risk. With a mouse in product, there's a medium risk. A mouse can get into bread, for example, because mice like grains and they could end up in a mixing machine uh, in a bakery and cooked with the bread. The severity, medium severity, could cause food poisoning, uh, but it's not a high risk or a high severity product. And a pin of cooked chicken, they're a low risk of it happening because uh, a lot of food factories would have uh, metal detectors, so it's very low risk of it actually getting into the food product. Uh, medium severity, um, yes, if you had a pin in your mouth, yes, it could cause uh, medium damage. 
Then we we'll look at uh, another high risk at the top left hand side, bone in fish. We've given it a score of 10,000. We've also given a score of 10,000 to a razor blade and a loaf of bread. So again, looking at the, the risk, uh, if it's a small figure in brackets, means there's a low risk of it actually getting into the food product. High risk means there's a good chance it can get into the food product. A bone in fish, for example. Uh, there's always notices on, on fish products. You may find small bones in this product because it's in a, in what we call an inherent contaminant. It's part of the food product, so the fish bones. So there is a high risk that can get into the food product. But low severe, severity, it won't do a lot of damage should uh, the consumer get the bone in their mouth. Okay, there's the uh, chance they could choke, uh, but it's not very likely. You normally cough it up before it does any damage. Uh, the razor blade in a loaf of bread, however, there's a high severity. Look at the damage that could do in the inside of somebody's mouth. And then we go into what we call the red areas. We've got a high risk and medium severity, giving us a score, combined score of 100,000, 100k. Uh, both these are critical control points. Uh, one is salmonella in undercooked chicken, and another is botulism in low acid food. On the top one, we've got high risk and high severity, giving us a score of 1 million, another critical control point. E. coli 0157 in undercooked beef burger. And since, I think it's about the early 80s, E. coli 0157 is a mutated breed, if you like, of uh, the generic E. coli that is now part of uh, cattle or, or beef's uh, natural uh, bacterial constituent. In the human being, for example, we've got the generic E. coli in our gut, in our uh, bowel or the large intestine, which it does a lot of good because it converts any food that uh, contains any trace nutrients into vitamin K, and it does us a lot of good because vitamin K is a blood clotting factor. But E. coli 0157 is not present in a human gut. Where E. coli 157 comes from is when the E. coli comes out with feces, that E. coli quickly mutates into 0157 as really a survival mechanism for the bacteria to survive outside the human or other animal body. But with cattle, it is part of now the generic bacteria within the gut of the cattle. So it is part of the, the meat product because when cattle then are slaughtered and gutted, cleaned. The, there's a lot of splashes and, and spillages from inside the abattoir. So you're going to get the E. coli 157 actually going onto the clean meat. And after that meat then is subsequently minced, then the 0157 will become part of the beef burger. So that's why you always need to cook a beef burger well. Internal temperature of at least 70 degrees C, if not 75 degrees C which will kill the E. coli bacteria. So key points, we looked at risk and risk assessment, how to conduct a hazard analysis, the risk that a hazard may occur, and the severity of a hazard. Oh, hello. Have you finished watching our video? Well, that's wonderful. Now, here's a secret. You can get even more useful information by clicking the link below. Go ahead, click it. It's right there. I don't see you clicking. You're not clicking, are you? Ah, now you click. Now, that's better. There you go. I see you there. Thank you for watching our video. Please take a moment to visit our website by clicking on the link below. We'll see you there.